train your cabin. Read those books in a blink. Oh yeah. Grab yourself a hot drink because you're watching how to train your Gavin. Yep, that's me. Hey guys, welcome back to How to Train Your Gavin. Today I want to go through all of the festive things that I absolutely love during winter. And these are kind of more catered towards things to do with Christmas. I am absolutely Christmas obsessed. And there's just so much that I watch, listen to, and do during the holidays that I would love to talk about today and see if we share any kind of traditions or any favourite movies or TV shows or even songs that remind us of Christmas that we both absolutely love. I probably missed a lot on this list but I feel like the movies, the TV shows, the music are things that I definitely would prioritise over everything else. So if I have missed something, do let me know in the comments what your favourite movies and and all of that jazz is and yeah I probably most likely love it I just couldn't include it in this list it's fine I do want to say first a huge thank you to Chris who provided me this huge Olaf Cobble cutout I am in love so thank you so much for saying that by the way I thought I would go through the songs first that I absolutely love every single year I listen to I listen to the specific playlist that my friend Adam made I will link it down below it's on Spotify and he has this list of a lot of Christmas songs that I absolutely love and some maybe not so much but I always end up listening to the same ones anyway but of course number one one of my favorite Christmas songs of all time is you're gonna roll your eyes but it is All I Want For Christmas Is You by Mariah Carey no matter how many times that song is covered you cannot you cannot top the Mariah Carey version the original 1994 version of it I absolutely love it I sing it all the time a lot of the times I still get the second verse wrong but I get I'm kind of getting better at it the more I listen to it over the Christmas period the better I get at singing it <laughs> not that I can sing but still it's a great 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 song I also really love One More Sleep by Leona Lewis that one's not really a uh, one that I hear a lot of people talk about every Christmas but it's one that I can literally bop to every single day even when it's not Christmas I mean the earliest I've probably listened to it is June <laughs> but I think that's such a great 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 song so upbeat and I love that as well as Underneath the Tree by Kelly Clarkson that is such a phenomenal song last year was the first time I ever learned the actual lyrics to it so I thought was the first time it's like you're here where you should be that right I always thought it was you're here ready to be and that's not right. <laughs> I think it was actually Ashley in A Frog Through Fiction who corrected me on that. And honestly, it blew my mind. It's one of those things where you think that a lyric is one way and you sing it that way for years. And then when you find out the actual proper lyric for it, it's kind of like, is my life a lie? That's the kind of vibe that I got from that correction. Don't laugh at this, but I absolutely love the Cheetah Girls a Cheerlicious Christmas album. Like the entire album. I remember buying that album from Woolworths like a decade ago or more. And that was just such a great Christmassy album. And there was one song on it called Five More Days Till Christmas that I absolutely love. It's such a great, great song. It's so cheesy. It is cheesy. It's the Cheetah Girls. But I absolutely love that song, Five More Days Till Christmas. Fun fact, I always forget to listen to it on December 20th when it actually is Five More Days Till Christmas. Maybe this year. Also, My Only Wish This Year by Britney Spears. Oh my god, like that one. Talk about an underrated classic. That one is so, so good. I remember I think the first time I ever listened to it was on a compilation album. And I was like, what? Britney Spears has a Christmas song? And it's actually a really good song. I really enjoy it. I'm also a really big fan, actually, of Mary's Little Boy Child by Moni M. I really love the Glee version of it as well, though. I listen to that one quite frequently. And it's probably... I don't know why, but it's just... I, I, I can't explain why I love that song. I just really do. Both versions of it. I think Glee does a great cover of it, but of course Bonnie M has like the OG amazing version of it. I'm also a big fan of the festive version of Love Me Like You by Little Mix. There's just something about that festive version that just oomph, oomph, oomph in a very festive Christmassy way. And I do, that's one of the ones that I listen to. It's not a Christmas song, but the festive mix of it, which you can find in that playlist as well, that's linked below. You can get a sense of just like how magical and Christmassy that song could be, even though some of the lyrics are rather questionable about it being, you know, Christmas time and stuff, because it's very uh, romance heavy. 
But at the same time, it's just so good. And it's used at the start of one of my guilty pleasure movies that I am going to be talking about later. I mean, there's hundreds upon hundreds of Christmas songs that I love, but I would say those were the ones or the main ones that I really vibe with. And I always have on repeat every single Christmas, usually starting about October time. It's sometimes been earlier, but sometimes I just haven't felt in the mood. But this year, this year, I have had this playlist on so many times and I just keep repeating those songs. Okay, so talking about the movies now, there are just so many. There's so many because there's just something so magical about Christmas time and being able to sit down and watch a Christmas film. I love them so much because they're a great escape, uh, especially because I've worked retail the past 10 years and I don't always get to go all out with Christmas like they do in the movies, you know, and they always make it seem so much more magical than I guess it is in real life, which is why I love them so, so much. And I want to talk about the animated movies first. I guess one of the ones that I genuinely do love is The Polar Express. And I mentioned this on Instagram recently, and a few people actually said it's creepy to them, which I can kind of say that, especially in terms of the way it's animated and the way the, the people in that are animated. But I still watch it every single Christmas Eve. It's the last movie I watch as I'm in bed and I go to sleep for Santa coming in the morning. It just gives me that feeling as I'm tucked up in bed and I just think, oh, Santa's on his way. That is my biggest tradition, is the fact that The Polar Express is the last Christmas movie I watch. Unless there's one on just randomly on Christmas Day, I'll watch that. But I don't actively watch Christmas movies after Christmas Eve. I watch Christmas movies in the build-up to Christmas Day, and that is one of my biggest Christmas traditions. Another animated movie I love is Arthur Christmas. That one is so good, so magical, and such a great adventure story. And I love James McAvoy voicing in that as well. Him in The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe as Mr. Tumnus. <laughs> Gosh. But anyway, back to Arthur Christmas. What I love about that, I love movies that actually incorporate Santa Claus. It's just the whole journey. I love a movie where there's this huge epic journey and Arthur Christmas is one that has that epic journey down. Another little Christmas movie that has become a staple in my household for the past couple of years now is, and this little fella gives it away, Olaf's Frozen Adventure. It is a very short animated movie that you can watch on Disney Plus, but I actually went to the cinema to see it. Long story short, it was being shown with the original Frozen in 2017, and I was not allowed to go and see it unless I was accompanying a child. So I ended up taking my niece just so that I could see Olaf's Frozen Adventure. So that was really good and magical. But I just love it so much because it ties in so nicely with the backstory of Frozen, with the sisters, Anna and Elsa not really having their own Christmas traditions because of the way they were brought up. And it's all I've trying to search for a Christmas tradition for them. It's so heartwarming. I'm tearing up just thinking about it. But the songs in that are so good too. Like I absolutely love When We're Together, which is the end song from that film. Now that Christmas when I went to see All Us Frozen Adventure, and sorry about the dust, it, this was a little dusty. I got this <laughs> musical jewelry box for Christmas. <laughs> Um, that if I press that button, it does sing the song when we're together from that movie. I do want to press it so that you guys can see it move and stuff, but I also don't want another copyright strike on this channel. So I'm going to end up just covering it myself, like plug your ears because it's going to be terrible, but I just want you guys to see like how it moves. I love this. This is like one of my favourite items ever that I have. Because <laughs> when we're together, I'll forever feel at home. And when we're together, we'll be safe and warm. Doesn't matter where we are, if you're there with me. Cause when we're together, that's my favorite place to be. Cause when we're together, it's a holiday every night. And when we're together, then the season's bright. I don't need the bells to ring. I'll know when it's here. Merry Christmas. So that just proves why I love it so much. 
so popular future films that aren't animated, the ones that I, <laughs> I just absolutely love and watch every single year without fail are the Santa Claus movies, one, two, and three. I love them, all three of them. I remember going to the cinema to see the third one. It might not be as classic as the first one or even the second one, but there's just something so magical about the third one as well that really sweeps me away in the film series. Tim Allen is great as Santa and he's just so funny. I would also say The Muppets Christmas Carol is fantastic. Fantastic. Definitely the best adaptation of A Christmas Carol by a mile. Like, seriously, that one is just... I don't know what, like, <laughs> how to explain how much I love it, but it's just so, so good. And it's funny. It has all of the Christmas feels in it. It's like an odd kind of movie because it's, you know, pairing the live action with the puppetry of Jim Henson. But I do love the Muppets, so <laughs> it was like a, a combination made in heaven. How the Grinch Stole Christmas with Jim Carrey. That one is, oh my god, just hilarious. I quote it so much. Like, even throughout the year, there are just quotes that I love from it. I remember a few years back, my niece was maybe about four or five. She would watch How the Grinch Stole Christmas on repeat, and not even just during Christmas time. She would watch it through the year whenever she'd come to stay. It could be in the middle of March. She would want to watch How the Grinch Stole Christmas. It kind of ruined it a bit for me that year, but I've, I've slowly gotten back into loving it like I used to when I was younger. <laughs> Elf as well is another fantastic movie. I don't... I'm not, I might be a bit controversial in saying I'm not a big fan of Will Ferrell, but I love him in that movie. I think he's great in that movie. And I just love how immature and silly he is in that movie and the whole character of Buddy the Elf. It just, oh, love it. Again, another one I don't think a lot of people talk about is Christmas with the Cranks. Also with Tim Allen, but Jamie Lee Curtis as well. I love her so much. I love Christmas with the Cranks. And I, you know what? I've always wanted to try Hickory Ham. I've never tried it before. But that one is based on Surviving Christmas by John Grisham, which I read for the first time last year. And I didn't think the book was as good as the movie. Like, the movie is definitely 10 times better. And I, oh gosh, I watch that. I try to watch that every Christmas Eve as well. I try and save that for during the day. But if I'm working Christmas Eve, then I end up watching it earlier. Miracle on 34th Street with Richard Attenborough in is definitely one of my favourite, almost classic ones. This is this one came out in 1994, so it's not really classic classic, but it's one that I grew up on and it's one that I adore. Mara Wilson in it as well is so adorable. What a great child actress she was. But that one is such an endearing film. Home Alone 1 and 2 as well. The, those first two movies are just second to none. I know they've done quite a few after that. I will say I don't mind Home Alone 3 that much and I actually used to be obsessed with Home Alone 4 when I was a kid. I had it on DVD and I would have it on repeat but there's just nothing can touch Home Alone 1 and 2 and now as an adult I can safely say that 1 and 2 are the only incredible films in that film series. Definitely Home Alone 1 and 2. I love, I love both of them rather equally. It's very hard to pick a favourite one out of those two. I love the New York setting of the second one and yeah, but the first one is just so iconic too. Oh god, it's so hard. Kevin! You know, it's just so good. On the British side of things, I love The Holiday and Love Actually. Those are two films that are just so very British and although saying that, The Holiday... I, I, yeah, I would, I would class it as a British one because I love me some Kate Winslet and Jude Law. But Love Actually, oh my gosh, that one is hilarious still to this day. A star-studded cast, really. Um, I've never watched a film with that many stars in it and just been so starstruck. But so funny, there's just so many funny moments in that, but also very genuine and romantic and yeah, I love that one so much as well. So my guilty pleasures, <laughs> movie-wise, are uh, A Bad Mom's Christmas. I absolutely love the Bad Mom's films, not gonna lie. And A Bad Mom's Christmas is the perfect holiday movie, <laughs> in, in my personal opinion. But I do realise it's probably not for everyone, so it's more a guilty pleasure for me. I just find it hilarious. Let's put the ass back in Christmas, you know? It's just like, I there's so many great moments in this. And, of course, Christine Baranski, who is, like, one of my favourite actresses. She is fantastic, and I love her and that. She's so funny. And I do quote that movie every now and then, too. I also have a huge soft spot for Hallmark movies. You know, the Christmas movies that air on Hallmark Channel. I mean, this is the jumper that I bought, especially... Uh, this is my Hallmark Christmas movies watching shirt, even though it's a jumper. I roll my eyes at every single Hallmark Christmas movie. Just all the way through, I roll my eyes like, oh my god. They all have the same story. If it doesn't have a straight couple as the main characters, is it a Hallmark Christmas movie? 
If it isn't a mainly all-white cast, is it a Hallmark Christmas movie? I mean, they're getting better at diversity. There was a gay couple in a recent Hallmark movie. There are some Hallmark movies that have black main characters, but it's still very predominantly white. So I'm hoping <laughs> in the next few years it gets a bit more diverse. But I had myself a Hallmark Christmas movies bingo board. So usually it's about the same thing. It's about a man and a woman. One of them is a Scrooge, the other one absolutely loves Christmas, and by the end of the movie, the one who's a Scrooge ends up loving Christmas. Usually they've got a really good paying job, but they end up, you know, leaving their work so that they can have a decent life with this stranger they've just met and fallen in love with. And usually it's, they traveled hundreds of miles and they're in this whole new city where they shop for Christmas trees and they go for coffee which they don't pay for any of it and they leave doors open and they just walk into people's houses and they have a huge Christmas decorations montage in it and usually I develop a crush on the male protagonist as well. <laughs> really I'm just jealous. That's what it is. I'm just jealous. All my Christmas movies are not very well written. There's usually loads of exposition that's dumped on you. There's not really any substance to them. <laughs> but at the same time, as much as I roll my eyes during them, I end up smiling at the end and I'm like, oh, that was so cute. So for the underrated movies then, I told you the movie section is going to be huge. Uh, the movies that I think are underrated that more people need to be loving are The Mistletones. Wait, oh my god, I, I can't tell you how much I love that movie. Tia Maori is in it from Sister Sister, and I love her so, so much. And it also has Tori spelling in, and I mean, it's hilarious. But I love the songs in it as well. I love the covers that they do. It's just, oh, it's just so good. It's on Disney Plus, so if you have not watched it yet, please, please do. I also had the biggest crush on Jonathan, is his name Jonathan Patrick Moore? who is the main love interest. Oh god, I had a huge crush on him. Even Andy Gala as well, who plays Tia Maori's best friend. Oh, look at me thirsting over the holiday movie actors. But The Mistletones is about um, Tia Maori, who really wants to be um, part of a singing group that was founded by her mum, but she has to audition for it. And Tori Spelling is, you know, part of that group and she makes all the executive decisions. And so Tia Maori has to audition to be in it, but Tori Spelling doesn't want her to be part of it. So Tia Maori ends up trying to form her own singing group for Christmas and they enter sort of battle of the bands for this you know shopping mall it's so good but Holiday in Handcuffs is another one I absolutely love stars Melissa Joan Hart and Mario Lopez oh my god his dimples but that one's about Melissa Joan Hart who has to go home for Christmas and she is single well nearly single and she is pretty much ashamed of that so she ends up kidnapping Mario Lopez it's oh, I roll my eyes at that storyline it's so stupid but she ends up kidnapping Mario Lopez and takes him to her family home where her family meets him and they end up, you know, really loving him. But of course he's been kidnapped. So <laughs> it's just so silly, but it was, uh, it's an underrated one of my favourites. I also really love Santa Baby 1 and 2, which stars Jenny McCarthy. That one ended on TV, gosh, years ago. I love them both because it's about Jenny McCarthy and she is the daughter of Santa and she ends up going home to the North Pole to help him with Christmas. Love it. And also Adiva's Christmas Carol, which is a bit of an older one now, but that stars Vanessa Williams, pre Wilhelmina Slater fame. And she just, oh my God, she's so phenomenal in that movie. It's just, it is a Christmas Carol retelling. Oh my God, I love, I love Adiva's Christmas Carol. Oh gosh, so good. A couple of recent favorites then before I move on to the TV shows. Gosh, this has gone so long. Jingle Jangle. A Christmas Story. I loved that one when I watched it recently. I thought it was phenomenal. The music in it, the cinematography of it, it just gave me all of the great Christmassy vibes. It wasn't really centered around Christmas, like Christmas and Santa or anything like that isn't like a big topic. It's mainly about a young girl who goes to live with her grandfather, who is an inventor and she wants to be like her grandfather. And it's just so heartwarming. I absolutely love the story and the way it comes together at the end. It's just so phenomenal. And also The Christmas Chronicles. That is a new recent favorite of mine too and the Christmas Chronicles 2 has just come out but I have not yet watched it I will most likely watch it very very soon so excited Kurt Russell is Santa who knew so I'm going to quickly go into my TV favourites then because I'm British there are a couple of British TV shows that I absolutely love so The Vicar of Dibley there is a Christmas special called The Christmas Lunch Incident where the Vicar of Dibley, who's played by Dawn French, she is the vicar of the parish. It's a very small village. So it's Christmas time and she's invited to four different Christmas dinners and she can't turn them down. So she ends up going to all of these Christmas dinners during Christmas Day. And 
of course, I mean, that's a bit too much, like, to eat and things. And it's just so funny. Like, it's The Vicar of Dibley is one of my favourite shows, and that is such a great Christmas special. When she tries to fit all the Brussels sprouts in her mouth, honestly, it just kills me. And at the end as well, after she's had the four dinners, I think a tractor takes her home. Like, she's just lying, pretty much catatonic, in the front of this tractor. It's just, oh kills me with laughter. Another one that I love is the Father Ted Christmas special and I can't really remember why I love it so much but there's definitely one long sequence of it that I find hilarious but that is when Father Ted, he is a priest, he goes to like the shopping mall and I think there's this huge lingerie floor and he accidentally finds himself there and he's trying to escape it and he ends up coming across loads of different priests on the way trying to find his way out before he's seen by somebody because it would be a huge scandal if a priest was found in the lingerie section so it's just that I don't know why but that's so hilarious. I also remember a gag where Mrs Doyle she is like the hilarious maid and she there's just this hilarious sequence of her just trying to clean things and then falling off things. Like, it, I don't know why, <laughs> looking back at it, it's like, just saying it out loud, it isn't funny, but it actually is. Like, it's so funny. And she's a hilarious character. She's my favourite character. Uh, but yeah, those two British... Irish shows I love. I also love the That's So Raven, okay, like, American now, the That's So Raven Christmas special called Escape Clause. That one had Raven, uh, well, taking a Christmas present that she shouldn't have opened, brace yeah, I think it was a bracelet, that she put on, and she ends up accidentally losing, so she has to go to the mall to get a new version of it, so that she can wrap it up and make it look like she hadn't actually opened the present in the first place and I just love that Christmas special. I love TV shows that do Christmas specials like that. It was very well rounded and I just love that story even too. Also the Sabrina the Teenage Witch episode, I think it's called A Girl and Her Cat and I just remember watching that as a kid and just finding it so magical and yeah that I love Sabrina the Teenage Witch. They did a lot of Christmas specials in that show but it's the season one special that really gets me and I could watch that so many times. I love that Christmas special. Glee also did a lot of Christmas episodes but I think the first one they did, A Fairy Glee Christmas, that one stands out as one of my favourites as well. Great 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 songs. I remember buying the CD of it and loving it. I really loved the version of, I think it's Deck the Rooftop, that I really enjoyed, as well as Rachel's version of Oh Holy Night. I think it's such a beautiful song. Friends, I absolutely love the one with the holiday armadillo, I think it was called, where Ross dresses up as the, the holiday armadillo to try and get his son to be more into Hanukkah, as well as Christmas. And I just find that such a hilarious episode. I love Friends so much, and they did so many great Thanksgiving and Christmas episode specials. Downton Abbey always made me feel like I was posh. <laughs> just for watching it, I just felt, you know, ha ha ha. Um, but I love the Christmas special they did, I think, at the end of season two, which was Christmas at Downton Abbey. And that was before the one that aired the year after, where things just went a bit too off the wall for my liking. So other TV show Christmas specials that I loved are ones like Supernatural, A Fairy Supernatural Christmas, Grey's Anatomy's Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer, Ghost Whisperer's Holiday Spirit, big fan of Ghost Whisperer, The Librarians, which is a bit of an underrated show, but I only ever watched the first season. Uh, but the first season had a Christmas special called And Santa's Midnight Run, which I really enjoyed. Uh, 90210 I was a big fan of, and I loved the Christmas special they did in season two called Winter Wonderland. It had a lot of drama in it, and I do love a TV show episode where even though it's a Christmas special, they still incorporate the plot lines moving into it, so it's not like a redundant episode, so that was a good episode. Eastwick's Magic Snow and Creep the Gene, which that was a show that was cancelled way before its time. Desperate Housewives the Miracle Song, very dramatic. Gilmore Girls' The Bracebridge Dinner was a really good one that I enjoyed recently. Ugly Betty giving up the ghost, and then for some sitcoms as well, because I feel like sitcoms do really great Christmas episodes, are ones like Two Broke Girls with the episode and the High Holidays, although they did have more Christmas episodes too, but I love that one. And there was 30 Rock, which had Luda Christmas. Really enjoyed that one. The Big Bang Theory with the Bath Item Gift Hypothesis. The Goldbergs, one of my favourites, and that is the episode A Christmas Story. Parks and Recreation had Christmas Scandal, which was really funny. And finally, The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody with Christmas at the Tipton. So, so many great Christmas specials and lots of things that I didn't mention in the video, but those were really just like a few, like a select few that I really 
really enjoyed. So yeah, that's pretty much all of the media for Christmas stuff that I could say. There are festive books that I love, but I did do a video for my favourite festive middle grade books, which you can watch. I will leave a link down in the description box. Uh, if you want to see the books that I love that are set during Christmas time or give you those wintry feelings. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please leave a like if you did. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.